Lesson 11.1, the work of Grant Gregor Mendel. So our goal is to discuss, observe inheritance patterns caused by various modes of inheritance, including dominant, recessive, co-dominant, sex-linked, polygenetic, and multiple alleles. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the Far Side by Gary Larson today is, well, well, another blonde hair conducting a little more research with that Jane Goodall tramp. Maybe a little insulting to Jane Goodall. All right. Our objective is to describe Mendel's studies and conclusions and describe what happens during segregation. So what is inheritance first? It is something that we receive from our parents, a contribution that determines our blood type, the color of our hair, and uh, so much more. So what kind of inheritance makes a person's face round or hair curly? So our first objective is to describe Mendel's studies and conclusions. Every living thing, plant or animal, microbe or even human being, has a set of characteristics inherited from his parent or parents. The delivery of characteristics from parent to offspring is called heredity. The scientific study of heredity, known as genetics, is the key to understanding what makes each organism unique. The modern science of genetics was founded by an Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel, this gentleman right here. Mendel was in charge of the monastery garden where he was able to do the work that changed biology forever. Mendel carried out his work with ordinary garden peas, partly because peas are small and easy to grow. A single pea plant can produce hundreds of offsprings. Today we call peas a model system. They're an example of a model system for studying genetics. Scientists use model systems because they are convenient to study and may tell us how other organisms, including humans, actually function. By using peas, Mendel is able to carry out, in just one or two growing seasons, experiments that would have been impossible to do with humans and that would have taken decades, if not centuries, to do with other animals. So Mendel knew that the male part of each flower makes pollen, which contains sperm, the male's productive cells, these guys right there. Similarly, Mendel knew that the female portion of the flower produces reproductive cells called eggs. And during sexual reproduction, the male and female reproductive cells join in a process known as fertilization to produce a new cell. In peas, this new cell develops into a tiny embryo encased within a seed. Pea flowers are normally self-pollinating, which means that the sperm cells, fertilized egg cells, come from the same flower. A plant grown from a seed produced by self-pollination inherits all the characteristics from the single plant that bore it. In fact, it has a single parent. Mendel's garden has several stocks of peas that were true breeding, meaning that they were self-pollinating and would produce offspring with identical traits to themselves. In other words, the traits of each successive generation would be the same. Mendel decided to cross his stocks of true bleeding, breeding, bleeding, plants because he caused one plant to reproduce with another. To do this, he had to prevent self-pollination. And he did this by cutting away the pollen and male, part, male parts of a flower and then dusting the pollen from a different plant into the female part of that flower as shown in this figure right here. Cut away the male parts and then dusted from another male part another into the female part over there. This process, known as cross-pollination, produces a plant that has two different parents. Cross-pollination allows Mendel to breed plants with different traits from those of their parents and then study these results. Mendel studied seven different traits of pea plants, each of which had two contrasting characteristics, such as green seed color or yellow seed color. Mendel crossed plants with each of the seven contrasting characteristics and then studied their offspring. The offspring of crosses between parents with different traits are called hybrids. When doing genetic crosses, we call the original pair of plants the P, all right, our parental generation. Their offspring are called the F1, or first filial generation. For each trait studied in Mendel's experiments, all the offspring had the characteristics of only one of their parents as shown in the table here. So he mixed um, a seed shape. He had a round and a wrinkled seed shape. He ended up with round. He had a yellow and a green. He crossed them and he ended up with yellow. Gray and white, he got gray. And so on and so on, as you can see there. 
So in each, of the, in each cross, the nature of the parent with regard to each trait seemed to have disappeared. Of the other parent, I should say. Each of the traits Mendel studied was controlled by one gene that occurred in two contrasting varieties. These gene variations produced different expressions or forms of each trait. The different forms of a gene are called alleles. Mendel's second conclusion is called the principle of dominance. This principle states that some alleles are dominant and others are recessive. An organism with at least one dominant allele for a particular form of a trait will exhibit that form of the trait. An organism with a recessive allele for a particular form of a trait will exhibit that form only when the dominant allele for the trait is not present. So you get purple and white, and then you end up with the purple. All right. Eventually, if you crossbreed these F1s, then you're going to end up with some variations there. All right. So in Mendel's experiments, the allele for tall plants was dominant, and the allele for short plants was recessive. Likewise, the allele for yellow seeds was dominant over the recessive allele for green. You end up with yellow. So describe Mendel's studies and conclusions. An individual's characteristics are determined by factors that are passed from one parental generation to the next. That's his first conclusion. All right. Objective two, describe what happens during segregation. So Mendel wanted to find out what had happened to the recessive alleles. Find out, Mendel allowed all seven kinds of F1 hybrids, these guys right here, to self-pollinate. So the offspring in an F1 across are called the F2 generation. The F2 uh, offspring of Mendel's experiments are shown. Tall, 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 whoops, short. When Mendel compared the F2 plants, he discovered the traits controlled by the recessive alleles reappeared in the second generation. Roughly one-fourth of the F2 plants show the trait controlled by the recessive allele. So Mendel assumed that a dominant allele had masked the corresponding recessive allele in the F1 generation. The reappearance of the recessive trait in the F2 generation indicated that at some point the allele for shortness had separated from the alleles for tallness. So how did the separation or segregation of alleles occur? Mendel suggested that the alleles for tallness and shortness in the F1 plants must have segregated from each other during the formation of the sex cells, or the gametes. Let's assume that each F1 plant, of all of which were tall, inherited an allele, all right, F1, had also inherited an allele for tallness from its tall parent and an allele for shortness from the short parent. So we got one allele of T and a short T right here. Okay, so with each parent or F1 adult produced, produces gametes. The allele for each of the genes segregated from one another so that each gamete produced only one allele for each gene. Okay, so once they produce, so you got a tall, a T, a tall, a T, a tall, a short, tall, a short. So whenever each of the two gametes carried the tall allele, the short allele, and then paired with another gamete to produce F2 plants, that plant was short right here. These two right here crossed and, and came up with a short plant. Every time one or more gametes, one or more gametes carried the tall allele and paired, they produced a tall plant. So the F2 generation had a new combination of alleles. Tall, the tall, tall, short. Now the reason these are tall is because the tallness is dominant. And it came out over the recessive. So objective two is describe what happens during segregation. During gamete formation, formation, the alleles for each gene segregated from each other so that each gamete carries only one allele for each gene. We will be practicing this in class two, ladies and gentlemen. So the first objective is describe Mendel's studies and conclusion. You should be able to do that. And also describe what happens during segregation. And we'll work on that if you're a little weak on it still. Our goal 
was to discuss observed inheritance patterns caused by various modes of inheritance, including dominant, recessive, co-dominant, sex leaks, polygenetic, and multiple alleles. So these objectives definitely help support the beginnings of this goal. And there's our cute picture. Have a good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen.